You are looking live at RSG Arena in Dunellen. Rock Ice, The Rock. Where the New Jersey Rockets U19AA girls are getting set to take on the Princeton Tiger Lilies. Hi everybody, it's Joe Rizzo here bringing you the action after a little hiatus. The girls had some time off over the Thanksgiving holiday. They did not have a game on the Friday or Saturday of this weekend, but we're back in action here on Sunday afternoon. So if you're following your favorite NFL teams, we encourage you to keep doing that, but maybe follow this game on a device or some kind of medium of your choice. And we are glad if you do that. The Rockets have been like a mass unit, and if you don't know what that is, that means they've had their fair share of injuries this season. But that's just part of hockey. You have to play the schedule that you have, and you have to go out there with whoever is available for you. And it's not just the injuries that have kept players sidelined, it's and bumps and bruises and wear and tear that comes along with the hockey season. But they're back to about as full of a roster as they're going to have for the immediate future. Sidelined are P.J. Jacobus and Kirsty Kamerkar, but the rest of the players are back available today and will be out there. An interesting note is that you might see what looks like P.J. Jacobus out there, but that's because uh, Luisa Rizzo will be wearing P.J.'s jersey today. A jersey mishap, but the captain stepped up and said, here, well, just wear my jersey. So 21 will be Rizzo today. And that will be a lot of pressure on Rizzo to pick it up and play like Jacobus, who is a great player who is sorely missed and we hope will be back soon. Rockets will be in the white jerseys with black trim and red outlining on their numbers. The nameplates are on the bottom of their jerseys. Black helmets abound. Emma Lacey in goal today. And the Tiger Lilies in their black-based uniforms orange numerals outlined in white. Their name plates are in white. They line up at center. Nieves on the dot with Menichello on the left and Rodriguez on the right. Liftoff from the Rock. 17 minute periods in this AGHF game. Wormster will skate it in. Finds a little traffic there from Rodriguez. And Rodriguez picks it up, sends it off Menichello's skate. She steers it out, gets through the neutral zone, will come in one-on-one, -on -one, goes around to the left side, wrist shot, save, rebound, score! C.C. Nieves, number 22, dents the net, 28 seconds into the game. And the Rockets take a 1-0 lead, Nieves from Menichello. They're cheering in Bedminster. Grandma and Grandpa Minichello off that beautiful assist by their granddaughter, number 48. Rockets change it up here. Redmond and Matone on D. Ulrich at center. Cook and Hansen the wings. They battle for it just below us. Bodner's there amongst a host of others. Cook is there for the Rockets. It squeezes out. Mosler brought it forward, but was rebuffed by Matone. Mosley's going to pick it up. She'll skate it over the wing on the left side. Finds traffic from Redmond, but does a nice spin move to get it down low. Tries to cut toward the net. A lot of traffic in front. Wormster took a shot at it, but it got just out of her reach. Good move by the Rockets there, because 11 is a potent source. The captain, or at least one of the C's, on Princeton. Bodner will hustle back into her own end, but can't get it out. Cook's going to get it. Just send it toward the net and gets the face off as that line was looking and readying for a change. 
So you'll get a look at Nieves, again, the goal scorer. Looks like two centers and three wing pairs today. Nieves on the dot. Connolly in the slot, Rizzo on the left wing. It comes to Lauren Fox, wrist shot through traffic, save, rebound, Rizzo scores on the rebound! Luisa Rizzo doubles the lead with 15-33 left in period one. Make your captain proud, wear her jersey, put the puck in the net. That's Rizzo right there at the end, Jacobus giving her the end of the high five. She's manning the defensive side bench. So a great start on a Sunday afternoon for the Rockets against the team that they've come out on top against twice, but in fairly well contested battles. Close games each. Rizzo now skating it in on the left side off the push forward from Fox. Fender's over there. Nieves got it through, redirected by Connolly in front. It goes just wide. Centered, Nieves, Rizzo's there, tries to bat it in, and there's a big pad save and a cover. They'll face it off with a change up front. Ulrich with Rodriguez and Minichello. Fox on the lefty, and welcome back to the lineup, Aaron Bruno on right D, under 16. Fox, through traffic, loose in front, off the rebound. Ulrich tries to put it in, but Fassler with the save. Fassler has been under fire here early on. Eight shots to none, and we're 2.03 into the game. A 2-0 Rockets lead. Shot through traffic, and Fassler got the stick on it. Seeing it through all of those legs and arms. Markley will pick it up, send it to the middle. Off the tip from Donnelly. And a kilo over there. And they send it in. Fox goes all the way around to pick it up. Chipped off the boards on the far side. Hulrich's going to break in with Menichello. Two on two now as somebody hustled back to break that up. And good thing they did. Rockets changed the defense pair, but they managed to maintain possession. That one sent out. I do not think that's an icing. It looked like it was a rocket that actually sent it out. And they wave it off. The backside referee had the hand up for icing. I think that was the wrong call, and I think they made the right call by canceling that. Menichello through the neutral zone. Menichello down Broadway. One on five. Wrist shot deflected, and it goes wide of Fassler who let it go. Comes to the near side corner. Battled four over there. Nieves one on two as Menichello changes out for Cook, who's going to rush into the picture from the right. There's Izzy Cook looking for it in front. Oh, it just came right down the slot, and she needed it on the right side of the slot. Matone kept it in, but she's going to hustle back now, and Redmond is back there as well. The defense exchange passes, and Matone tries to get a step, and she gets it for Nieves, who banks it off the boards for Cook, who brings it in. Cook, wrist shot. Fassler grabbed it. It was going wide, but she just decided to stop play there wisely. Rockets will change it up. Now Ulrich will be on the dot with Connolly in the slot and Rizzo on the left wing. Nieves and Rizzo with early goals for the Rockets in the white jerseys leading 2-0. Ulrich wins it back to Matone. Matone is going to send it down low into the near side corner. Too strong for Rizzo. One on two and now shuffled along. Mosley will pick it up and send it in, and it will be short of icing as Redmond picks it up, fires it hard off the glass, but Markley picks it off. Markley left it, but Rizzo jumped into the passing lane, picked it up. Rizzo trying to send Connolly. Connolly has Wormster to deal with over there, so she curls. Lost it for a moment and sends it back in, but Markley picked it off. Fox slides in, safe at second and jumps up and picks up that loose puck, kind of being in an area where she wouldn't otherwise have been. Connolly was shifting back to help cover up on D there. Fox keeps it in at the point. Can't send it through traffic as Wormster blocked it with the right pad, the shin pad. Ulrich pulls it out of the corner. Goes to the point for Fox. Fox cheats down low, wrist shot. It hit Bodner in the glove and slightly changed direction, but Fassler saw it all the way. 
and she stepped into it with the glove to catch it like a first baseman leaning in for a throw from the second baseman. 12-13 left first period from the Rock in Dunellen, New Jersey. Joe Rizzo bringing you the action. 2-0 Rockets early. Wrist shot by Fox. Tipped, but changed direction in a favorable way for Fassler, and she knocked it down and covered it up. So restart it again. The Eva's on the dot. Rodriguez in the slot. And Aquilo on the left wing. Faceoff goes all the way to the far side, and Bruno stepped in to get it before it could go out. Bruno and Fox crisscross, and the puck is sent in, but there's plenty of black jerseys there. Markley will chip it over everybody with the deft touch so as to not incur icing. Fox sends it up through, but Risco picks it off and skates it into the right circle. Hounded over there, centering feed, and good job by Bruno using the body to shield the player and allowing the puck to get into safer grounds. Fender tried the one-timer in the slot, couldn't connect. Here comes Minichillo. She's one on two. Now two on two as Rodriguez hustles in. Nieves trails. Knocked away by Markley, but Nieves is going to try to pick it up. Actually, that's Redmond at the point. Shot goes redirected in front, but Fassler got the pads on. Rockets send it around. Redmond hustling off to the other side. Beats the Princeton player to it. Manichello gets dumped or is, is she the victim of the cross check? It looks like she's the victim of it and I would think that the Rockets are about to embark on the power play or is it Manichello that's going off on the penalty? Difficult to say and it is going to be a cross check on Hope Manichello. So with 11.02 left in period one, and the Rockets holding a 2-0 lead with a 13-1 edge in shots on goal, they will be out there to kill off a penalty. Up front, it will be Hansen and Ulrich, and Hansen will take the face off. Matone and Redmond on D, and Hansen wins it cleanly back to Redmond, who sends it up the near side boards. Markley steps into the hash marks to send it back down low, and the Princeton power play, if and when they get set up, is a good organized unit, but the Rockets are going to hope to never let them get to that point. Ulrich on the forecheck makes Markley work a little extra hard to get it to Russell, and eventually they move it through neutral ice. Fired off the skates of Russell, that was Chase. Can't get it into the zone. Rockets on the forecheck doing excellent work there. Sent in, everybody avoids it, no icing, because it went through a gaggle of players, all of whom had a chance to touch the puck, but it was a case where everybody thought the other person was going to touch it. Chase fans on it, Ulrich picks it off, shorthanded, wrist shot, oh, she fired it wide. Fassler came out to cut down the rebound, and maybe that forced the wide shot. Ulrich on the penalty kill, and Princeton will send it down and that will be an icing so that allows the Rockets to cleanly change their penalty killers. It will be Rizzo up front with Connolly and Bruno and Fox who do their customary stick tap. Good to see that back in the action on D. Connolly will take the draw. Rizzo will be in the slot. Lacrosse style face off as they tie each other up. Wormster got the better of it and she sends it back to the defensive perch. Rizzo pressuring on that side. Rizzo wearing 21 today. Not, that's not Jacobus, but they do tend to look a little bit alike, about the same size players and the dark long hair as well. Sent back in, Princeton trying to get set up on the first power play of the game for either team. Sent right through the slot. This is not an icing because that's a Princeton driven play right there. They tried to center it, but did not connect. On the four check is Rizzo, trying to pressure Markley. She'll peel off. Oh boy, Cook jumped on for Connolly and nearly had a pick. Bodner gets in, wrist shot off the pads of Fox, the shin pads, it goes to the far corner. Bruno chipped it, left it for Cook, who's going to chip it forward. It doesn't go into the bench, and it will be picked up at center ice by Nieves as Rizzo jumps off. Cook 
and pants in the wings. Nieves, she has the first goal, 28 seconds in. Rizzo has the second one. Is there a third one in the offing as the Rockets put pressure? Redmond picks it off at the point. Shot redirected. And Fassler makes the save through a lot of traffic. It comes all the way out to Redmond. Matone jumps on and she fields it on the far side defensive perch. Nieves gets it in onside, no icing. And she will battle for it in the corner. Nieves looking to center. It goes down low for Cook. It's loose in front, and it's in! Izzy Cook puts it in on a loose puck that was sitting in the crease. It eluded Fassler, who looked like she had it for a moment, but there was no whistle. Cook saw it in the front, and she popped it into the net. An easy tap in for Izzy Cook. Makes it 3-0 Rockets with 8.08 .08 left in period one. Everything going the Rockets' way thus far. That's shot number 14. Rockets in the white jerseys. Princeton Tiger Lilies in the dark, if you're just joining. Manichello moves in. Goes around the circle on the left side. Wrist shot, Fassler has it. They blew the whistle, but that puck was just sitting in front of the right pad, the left pad. Far side referee, I had no way of seeing that. In general, at this level, the referees are gonna err on the side of being too quick rather than too late with a whistle when the goalie is involved. They don't want sticks or knees or anything coming at those goaltenders in prone positions. Rockets win the faceoff, Menichello in the slot, gets it to the dot, wrist shot, one save, loose in front. Ulrich couldn't get the handle on it, but she almost did. Matone under pressure, turns and sends it right to Minichello just out of picture. Hope gets by Markley, but is forced to turn and dump it in. 7.28 left period, 1-3-0 Rockets. They're in the white jerseys. Redmond sends it in. Rockets back to a, a modicum of players in the lineup that will help them function a little bit better than they have been. One timer by Rodriguez. Didn't get a lot on it, but got it at the net and Fassler made the right pad save. This is about what the Rockets lineup will look like for the near future at least, for probably until the end of the calendar year. And maybe some reinforcements for injured players on the way back, but they got enough to do a lot of damage here. And so far they're doing precisely that. Ulrich battles for it in the far corner. Markley stripped her of it. Russell sent it around. Battle on the near side. Donnelly went down in the puck battle with Matone. The Rockets keep it in. Ulrich, she's going to skate it around the net. Rodriguez will hustle off. You could hear Coach Jacobus calling for Mia. Mia. And Haley Connolly jumps on for Mia Rodriguez and sends it to Grace Matone, who will fire it in at the net at a sharp angle. And Lucy Fassler covers it up. Whistle and a stoppage of play. 6.07 left period one. All Rockets, three nothing over the Princeton Tiger Lilies from Ganellan, New Jersey. 19 to one on the shots. That looks to be an accurate assessment as well. Nieves on the dot. Connelly in the slot, Rizzo on the near side wing. We'll keep reiterating that Rizzo's wearing 21 today. That's not Jacobus, although we hope PJ is back as soon as possible. She's on the bench in a black jersey, helping out a teammate who needed a jersey today, and there is that teammate. She has one goal so far. Fox fired it off of Mosley's left shin pad. A lot of shin pads blocking in. Bruno kept it in at the point. And Nieves, as Wormster, the usually sure-handed one, fumbled that in a little patch of thick ice. The Rockets maintain offensive possession. Fox tries to send it through, but Mosley blocked it down, or redirected it at least. Wormster's going to skate in and get it in, and she will get it through the top of the slot, trying to get through the dot. Still has it, loses, regain, takes a one-timer. It was sort of a snapshot, and it was looking for the top right 
corner of the net, but it didn't get there. So Emma Lacey has been tested once so far, and she's one for one. Her teammates are doing such great work ahead of her. That icing waved off, I'm not really sure why. But they play on. Bruno for Cook, just out of picture. Ulrich in there, but can't get to it. Mosley's gonna pick it up and skate it into the offensive zone. She's ready for a change, so she dumps it in. Rockets ping pong it on the far side corner. Stefanu's back there with Bruno. Risco picks it up behind the net, hounded by Ulrich. Stefanu centers it, but it was knocked away, I think, by Lacey's stick. Hansen has a little room over there, so Francesca's gonna send it up and through the middle for Izzy Cook. Cook wrist shot, Fassler saw it all the way and got it with the blocker. Fender tipped that one enough so Matone could get it and that it wouldn't be an icing. Ulrich picks it up off the feed. She's gonna to try to turn the corner, but Bodner's there to rebuff her efforts. Ulrich still has it, reverses it. Matone's gonna hustle all the way down from the point. Cook is gonna shift back, at least for maybe a moment. Rockets are maybe caught a little bit here, but they're not gonna pay for it as they get three or four back, including Cook and Matone. Chase grabs it at the point, but she sent it in after an offside was called. The ref made the call with the hand, didn't quite get there with the whistle, but... Chase played to the whistle, which is what you're taught. 3.30 left period one, three nothing Rockets, 20 to one on the shots. And it's a somewhat surprising development because of the games that these teams have played. The Rockets have had the better of the possession in the, in the games, but the games themselves, as far as the scores, have mostly been pretty tightly contested. Might have been missing one of those games in the mix but where the Rockets, maybe this is the fourth time they've played. Russell brings it in over the left side point. Wrist shot, Lacey's sharp. She gloved it down and that one had a lot of juice on it. Russell gained the point on the left side. She didn't wait to get to the top of the circle. She fired that thing in there with a lot of juice, but Emma Lacey was up for the task. Nieves on the dot, Rodriguez and Menichello, the wings in the slot. Wins the face off, chipped up. Menichello's gonna get it. Menichello and Rod Rodriguez. Menichello over to Rodriguez, but Russell hustles all the way back to back check it and snuff what would have been a two on one. Nieves is gonna get called for something over there. I'm not sure what. Looked like a good angle when she was on the puck. They're gonna call interference. I'll just disagree with the call. The puck was there, she had the angle. And if the puck is not in possession of the player, you can't impede their progress. But if the puck is in possession of the player, you can angle off and shield them off. But it's a hustle penalty by the Princeton player. And they've now embarked on power play number two of the game, both in favor of the Tiger Lilies. 3-0 Rockets, they'd like to keep it that way. On the last power play, Grace Ulrich had the best chance of anybody on the ice, and she was shorthanded. That puck chipped into the protective netting above the glass, I guess off of a Rockets blade, and that's why they keep the face off down low. Ulrich up front, killing it off with Rizzo. Rizzo wearing 21 today, not her customary 13. And so far, it's been a good game for her as she's one goal to the good on the score sheet. Tiger Lilies try to set it up. Mosley sends it to Markley, toward Markley at the point, but can't connect. Ulrich ahead for Rizzo. Rizzo with Chase. They're two on three. Banks it off the boards. Maybe Chase had poked it away there. Chase is going to bring it up. She's two on four with Wormster, but if you're Princeton, those are probably the two that you want up there. Rockets break it up. Wormster's going to skate it behind the offensive net, sends it toward the middle, was maybe looking for Fender, tried to go low. Rizzo grabbed it, 
chipped it off the boards. Chase picks it up. Rizzo and Ulrich back there. Oh, they nearly forced the turnover, but they're going to have to hustle back. That was sent, and Wormster actually kept the play onside by kicking that puck. Otherwise, Rizzo would have been offside if it had crossed the line. They play on. 34 seconds in the power play. Risco leaves it for Markley, who fires it at the net. Redmond picks it up. Redmond with Rizzo and Connolly, but Rizzo's way at the end of her penalty kill and shift and skates off. Redmond will take it. She'll keep going. The Rockets do have four out there as Connolly patriates the point on the right side, a shift on a defensive posture. Ten seconds left as Stefanu skates it in on the power play. 48 seconds left and there's going to be a penalty on that exchange. It comes to the back line. It's going to be on the Rockets. Lacey knocked it away and they don't call the freeze of the puck until Connolly touches it up. So the Rockets will be shorthanded once again. Redmond will go off for roughing and the faceoff will take place to the right of Emma Lacey on her stick side with 36.7 seconds left in period one. The Rockets have a 3-0 lead, but this is the third power play that they've yielded in the game, and Princeton has yet to dent the net. The Rockets would like to keep it that way. Nieves and Cook up front to kill it off. Nieves grabs that one off a battle and a scramble in the faceoff. Nieves still with it. Nieves shorthanded, gets it in, but it's going to be picked up by Mosley and sent forward. Somebody got a piece of it, maybe. No, maybe not. So a whistle on the icing. The Rockets will take that all day on a power play kill. And they are the shorthanded team. You love it. You love nothing more when the visitor, the uh, visitors, well, they are the visitors in this case. When the power play team ices the puck, you love it. Because that leaves the Rockets now with 15, 13 seconds to kill off here at the end of the period, shorthanded. Mosley chucks Matone down. They don't call that one. And that is going to expire the period. Little rough stuff at the end of the period there, but no calls. And that means when we head into period number two with the Rockets holding a 3-0 lead, they will have a minute 24 to kill off on the penalty to Kira Redmond for roughing. All three penalties so far have been called against the Rockets. So they have three penalties and three goals, and they've let up three shots. So threes are wild at the moment. And they have a 20 to 3 edge in shots for period one. Nieves opened the scoring 28 seconds in on a feed from Hope Menichello. Luisa Rizzo, wearing 21 for this game, we'll keep reiterating it. We'll probably put that in the notes of the game as well in the description below. She doubled the lead about a minute thereafter. And then Izzy Cook, midway through the first period, had a tap in on a loose puck that Lucy Fassler thought she had. She thought it was underneath her, but the puck squirted out and was just kind of sitting in the crease in various parts of the crease for about a second and a half, which in hockey time, when you're just looking at it, seems like about a half hour. But eventually Cook was the first one to get to it and just had to nudge the puck forward to get it in. It was that close. So that's how we got to three. The goalies change ends. Fassler will now defend the goal to your YouTube right. And Emma Lacey, Emma Vezina, number seven in white, will defend the goal to our YouTube left. The Rockets have 84 seconds to kill in the penalty to Redmond, and they will start it out with Ulrich taking the face off. Mia Rodriguez on the left wing, Lauren Fox, and Aaron Bruno on defense. Wormster, Bright, and Mosley up front for Princeton. Lift off, period two. This puck sent in deep. And 
and it goes to the far side wing where Rodriguez picks it up. One minute left to kill. When I say now, now. Rodriguez still battling for it over there. One on two. The Rockets will take all that time and just keep killing it. Oh, it comes up and gets out. Lacey knocks down the shot by Bright and covers it up. So the Rockets were not even attempting to try to necessarily get that puck toward the front of the net or to a scoring area. They'd take just killing time in the corner and Mia Rodriguez was doing a perfect rendition of what we call ragging the puck. Just ragging out that time, letting time expire while her team shorthanded. 42 seconds to kill. Nieves and Rizzo up front. 22 Nieves, 21 today, Rizzo. Comes to the near side wing and Rizzo's gonna get there first. She's gonna rush it out. Rizzo skates through neutralized. She was one on four. She does get the puck into the offensive zone. Nieves picks it off and sends it down low. So Risco couldn't get it out. Nieves picks that one off on the forced turnover with Rizzo. And the Rockets have 15 seconds to kill off. And not only are they killing it, they're trying to generate offense. Rizzo to Matone. Matone fires. Loose. There's a shot that Nieves got. But Fassler got the stick blade on it and it popped over the net. Redmond will jump out of the box just to your left. She will join the play. And the Rockets will try to forge forward on offense. But the puck comes out. So they have Matone and Redman on D. Connolly now on the wing. Nieves on the other wing, I mean at center, and Menichello on the other wing. So Hope gets it, sends it in. Connolly's gonna jump off, Hansen comes on. Ulrich relieves Nieves. Rockets putting pressure down low. Banked off the boards on the far side and out. Redmond to Matone. Handcuffed her a little bit. Foot cuffed her maybe? Puck pops off the boards. Hansen to Minichello. They call offside. It looked like they were onside. And Hansen turning and saying, really? I think she has a point, but that's the call. So that's what happened. After the Rockets got 20 of the first 21 shots of the game, the Tiger Lilies have had the last three. The Tiger Lilies have had three power plays. They haven't converted, so it's a 3-0 lead for the Rockets, who have not been on the power play. Rockets will not let Princeton have any easy breakouts here. They are defending well. They are forechecking well, and everything is clicking. Wormster tries to center it, but Fox bats it away. Comes to the point. Bodner sends it down low. They play catch. Bodner to Chase. Chase is going to step in. Fire. It went off the part of the piping that is along the ice on the side of the goal. So if you were deft enough to hear the sound of a post being rung. It was not really the post that represents getting hit on a big scoring chance. It's the one along the side of the net there. Lacey freezes it, and the Rockets will have a draw to her right. Wormster and Nieves. Wormster looked like she was to the better of it, but Nieves wins the draw to Bruno. Bruno can't get it out. Donnelly was able to keep it in. Centering feed, Rodriguez batted it away. Russell keeps it in, Rodriguez does bat it away. Chase retreats to her own end, tries to send it up for Russell. They battle for it just below. Wormster is there, sends it into Mosley who fires it over the net. They have two 24s in black. Donnelly is the lefty, Mosley is the righty. Nieves picks up the whiff by Russell. Will skate it right over the logo, but Chase retreats back, grabs it, sends it in, and it's gonna be an icing. 
So the Rockets have 13.03 left in period number two. And a 3-0 lead. Tiger Lilies have gotten their sea legs, though, after giving up two within the first minute and a half of the game. They've now had the last four shots in the game. Rockets win the faceoff. Redmond has to hustle all the way back to the point to get it. And Bright pounds it forward. Redmond and Matone combine to get it in. Wormster has it, but if she brings it in, she's offside. And the Rockets held her up anyway. Rizzo tries to get through a couple, does that. Knocks the stick right out of Mosley's hands. Gets a drop pass from Ulrich coming back in. Rizzo to Ulrich, couldn't connect it through as Wormster knocked it away. It comes to the point, Matone with the snapper. It hit Wormster in the right shin pad. She knocked it away to the corner. Picked off there as Matone was trying to send it low. Matone steps up and keeps it in. A brilliant play. Rizzo grabs it below the line, but was trying to center it for Ulrich, and Risco knocked it away from Riz Rizzo. Buck comes out of the zone, and Matone is battling for it with Mosley. Matone wins that one on two. Ulrich tries to forge it ahead, but Markley grabs it. Mosley sends it in, and she'll hop over the boards for a change. Wholesale changes on the Princeton end. Rockets. We'll skate it out looking for open ice. Ulrich looking for Rizzo. I think Rizzo's looking to maybe finish her shift there. She runs, runs into Stefanu, who got the worst of that. And Princeton grabs it, centering feed, knocked away by Lacey. And Wormster tried to pound in the rebound, but Lacey got it. So the tide has turned a little bit here. It hasn't been reflected on the scoreboard, but three nothing Rockets, 11.32 left period two, but now the shot's 21 to six. So five of the last six offerings on net to Princeton. Nieves on the dot, her wings are Rodriguez and Minichillo. They're in the slot. Fender, wrist shot, save Lacey, and then knocked away and knocked out. This puck is not gonna be strong enough for icing. Markley will pick it up just at the touchline there, as they like to call it in soccer. Sent out by Princeton. And Lauren Fox sends it off the boards on the far side. That's not icing, it was tipped by a Princeton player. Nieves trying to out hustle Wormster there. They reach at the same time. Ty goes to the runner. Nieves is going off for a check. Fassler will hustle off to see if they can get six on five, but they won't because Bruno makes the touch. Stefano was trying to move it forward, but the Rockets will go shorthanded for the fourth time today as Nieves gets, they call it a roughing. You could have called it a check or a roughing, either way. Two minutes in the box for number 22 in white. So up front to kill it off, Francesca Hansen on the dot and Izzy Cook in the slot. Grace Matone and Kira Redman on D. Risco won the draw, but Redman stepped into it to steal it. It comes toward the point. Cook and Matone are the two Rockets to touch it. Princeton moved it up, but Donnelly sent it out as her offering to Chase was off target. Now the speedy Donnelly is going to bring it in. She's the left-handed number 24. Rockets fire that one into the Princeton bench, so the face-off will be to the left circle of Emma Lacey, who is clearing the snow out of her crease. On the draw, it goes to Princeton in black. Bodner at the point, can't get it through Hansen's left shin pad. Donnelly's gonna pick this up, skate it toward the middle, but right into the trap of Matone and Hansen. They moved it up, but not out. Russell's gonna pick it up. Tries to go to the point, but Cook stepped in. Cook takes her time and space, skates it out, was looking for an open swath of ice to try to send it low. Cleared the line at center so there wouldn't be an icing. Hansen picks it up, she's one on two, Pounded by Chase now, tries to nutmeg her, but Chase didn't fall for it, and 
she'll bring it back the other way. Chase clears the zone on the far side, but Matone knocks it right out. Bodner's there, sends it to Russell in the middle. 40 seconds left for the Rockets to kill here, and they lead 3 0. 9 22 left, period two. Redmond got a little handcuff, recovered. There's a shot in front. It's a save, but it's still loose. Another save. Risco, she's denied by Lacey and tied up in front. And Hansen making sure she stays out of there with words and not actions. Big save sequence by Lacey. That they put up one shot in there and Risco is going to go off for the roughing. So that will negate the final 20 seconds of power play number four for the Tiger Lilies. They're now 0 for 4. And that will give the Rockets, once CC Nieves is able to exit the box, I'm fairly certain she will just jump right into the play from the box. That will give the Rockets 100 seconds of power play time. Their first. Connolly on the dot, Rizzo in the slot. We're four on four for 19 more seconds. Bruno at the right point, Fox at the left. Wormster's gonna pick this one up, send it to Russell, and Russell will move it out and get it down low. Nieves has stood up in the penalty box. There's a battle be below the end line. Connolly tries to chip it forward, but it's kept in. And now Nieves actually jumps out, and Grace Ulrich jumps on. So the Rockets with their first power play action of the game. They send it up, but Connolly can't get a pass. Markley grabs it, hounded by Rizzo, steered back up toward the offensive zone by Bright. Markley feeds Russell, who's going to skate it in. One on four, maybe two on five now. Russell tries to center it, but it's knocked away by Bruno and Ulrich, team defense. Connolly misconnects with Rizzo, who's going to try to get it out, but Markley had the angle and beat her to it. 56 seconds left in the Rockets' first power play. Rizzo tried the awkward feed there to spring somebody, but Bright picked it off as it couldn't connect. Hard off the boards. The Rockets' first power play has been played defensively in their own end. They can't even get the puck out, but now they will as Connolly chips it for Rizzo. She's got not much of an angle. Markley has the better angle. Markley got to it first and took a spill. No trip there. Markley was not touched by Rizzo's stick. What a play by Ulrich as Mosley was going to get sprung by Wormster there. Oh, uh, uh, Matone, rather, got it underneath the skate and sprawled out. You don't see that very often. Grace Matone with a play. Seven seconds left on the power play. Rockets have not been able to establish anything here as Princeton puts on the pressure. That'll kill it off, so Risco gets out of there and touches the puck, but Nieves picks it off and sends it in. Nieves with Hansen and Minichello chases it down in the near side corner. Comes to the point. Redmond shot, hits Risco's stick. Risco tries to spin it out of there, but Nieves jumps in with help from Redmond. Hansen's just going to walk right out of the corner, chip it in front for Menichello, but a little too much sauce there for Hope to knock it down. Well, it's Sunday afternoon, so Tootie was maybe sending a little Sunday gravy, and Nieves scores! CC Nieves makes it 4 0 with 6.25 left in period two. Maybe CeCe's gonna taste a little of that Sunday gravy. And I know somebody in Arizona is twitching right now hearing me call sauce gravy, but you know, it's more of a Jersey expression, people. Don't worry about it. So Nieves, in a basically innocent play, got the puck from Hansen at the top of the slot, sent it, at the net, not even a shot with a lot of juice on it. Lucy Fassler just was screened by about three people and just never saw it before it 
found its way inside the post on the glove side. So four nothing Rockets, 22-8 on the shots. They had a 20 to one advantage on the shots. The Tiger Lily's got eight of the next nine, and now the Rockets, once they get the tenth in that sequence, as the puck comes at the net, Fassler trying to cover it up. It's still loose. Oh, I thought it might have been in. That would have been another one for Rizzo, who was the closest one there, but it doesn't go in. So the Rockets converting. A backbreaker. Rizzo knocks it down with the shin pad, but Bodner was back there and she couldn't get the break. Nieves with two, Rizzo and Cook each with one. That's Rizzo 21 today. That's not PJ Jacobus, but PJ is in the picture. She's on your right at the end of the Rockets bench nearest to the scorer's table wearing her red jersey today. There's Rizzo, and she will get it in and dump it in. Donnelly tried to run her from behind, but Rizzo must have seen it and just threw her down. Rockets now back checking as Donnelly brings it in. Matone shields her off and will get there first. Matone's getting hooked like a dervish by Donnelly. They don't call it though, and that's fine. They've been pretty consistent with the calls today, the referees. Nieves. Fires it wide. Cook is going to grab it out the other side. 23 against 23. Markley, 23, and Black wins that battle. Sent through the top of the slot and now out. Donnelly picks it up on the far side. And it's sent in. The tone. Russell picks it off. Russell fires it just wide. It bounds off the end boards and Lacey covers it up with the glove. Whistle and a stoppage of play. 4.03 left, period number two, four nothing Rockets. They jumped out early, two nothing, and they just were overrunning the Tiger Lilies and had it up to three nothing by the middle of the first. It's been a much different game since, but the Rockets have enjoyed all the advantages on the scoreboard here. But the, the shots have turned in favor of Princeton for the last however much long. They have eight of the last 11 shots in the game through the Tiger Lilies. So the four nothing score is what's really important, right? But the course of play has been much more level than the score would indicate. Olmster whacks it off the boards on the far side. Rockets will gain the possession. Cook sends it toward the net, looking for Rodriguez. It didn't quite get all the way through traffic. Sent up the middle of the ice. Matone chips it forward. Bright steps into an open lane there. Ulrich got away with a hook or a slash or something at the gloves, but retrieved her stick blade away from the hands area quickly enough. There's been some of that stuff going on behind the play, but I'd say that's just hockey in this case. It hasn't been too unseemly. We've seen much worse. Pop up, Manichello knocks it down with the glove. She doesn't have a goal, but she has a pretty assist today. Does 48. Wrist shot, redirected by Hansen. Wow. I don't know how Hansen even saw that, but it was almost 2D time right there. Redirected wide. Comes down low. Oh, Rick battling for it. Markley shoves the shoulder right into her there. Comes down, no. Fall immediately on the icing, but now they do. The referee is sharing pucks, so the rear side referee takes his puck and throws it to the front side referee, and that speeds up play a little bit, as you don't have to retrieve it from the other end of the ice. 2.19 left, period two, Rockets four. Princeton Tiger Lilies nothing. Bruno off the faceoff, wrist shot. Kicked away with the right skate by Chase. It comes between the points. Fox looked like she took it out over the line, but they say it's onside. Stefano tries to clear it into the opposite side, but Bruno is the one to get in and step in. No call on a pretty clear trip there. So they let it go. Picked off by Stefano. 
Didn't have any room there as two other rockets were back checking and Connolly is able to pick up the loose puck. Hansen chips it past Wormster. Risco hustles back and she'll go to Chase on the near side D. Chase will carry it in and send it down low. Donnelly steps in to keep it in as we are under a minute and a half. 123, 22, 21 left in period two. Rockets four. They're in the white jerseys. Princeton Tiger Lilies, nothing. They are in the black jerseys. Centering feed. It went right all the way through the crease. Bruno elected not to do anything with it for fear that she might redirect it into her net. Lacey let it go all the way through. She doesn't let that one go through. She knocks it down with the glove and smothers it for a face-off. 56.7 seconds left, period two, from The Rock in Donnellan, New Jersey. Joe Rizzo here bringing you the action. And if you like it and you want to see more, hit the subscribe button and the alerts button. And every time we go live or do a coach interview or upload a better copy of the game, which we often do, then you will get notified. And we appreciate your unyielding support. Markley's shot fired through a lot of traffic doesn't get all the way through. It comes down to the near side corner and Rodriguez moves it up but can't get it out. Worms are hustling back. You know, I felt like there were two of them because they're all over the place. There's two Worms or 11s out there, so I'm not sure which one's which at this point. One's on D and one's at forward. 22 seconds left for the Rockets to keep the zero on the board for Princeton for the second period. Donnelly with Bright. Bright picks it off of Matone. She leaves it for Donnelly, but Matone stepped into the lane. Which worm, sir, is it? Doesn't matter. Period over. 4 nothing Rockets after two. The shot's on goal. 24 for the Rockets. Nine for the Tiger Lilies. So that is an advantage of 8-4 for the Tiger Lilies in period one, which is an interesting turn because typically in a game at this level where you see a team outshot 20-1 to one in a period, especially at and it was a period in which the Rockets played shorthanded for over five minutes. They were actually the beneficiaries of an overloaded advantage in shots. And then the next period, Princeton picked up its game and took the advantage in shots there. And they add another one now. So the Tiger Lilies actually... It's 24-10. We'll put it on the record for you so you could see. 24-10 after two. So that means an advantage of 9-4 in period two after being outshot 20-1 in period one. You don't often see that. Well, we're glad you're watching from wherever you are. Bedminster, Buffalo, Berkeley Heights, Berkeley, California. Anything else with a B? We got any other Bs? Baltimore, Baltimore. Not sure if we have anybody from Baltimore. Beijing, we got some Beijing people checking in today. We are glad you are with us. Fassler will defend the goal to your YouTube left for the third period and Emma Lacey will Try to keep all the pucks out of the goal to our right on YouTube for period three. Ulrich on the dot, Menekillo on the left wing, Rodriguez on the right, Matone on lefty, Redman on right D as the Rockets are whole on defense again after about three or four weeks of not having their full complement of defenders that we are used to. Risco, Mosley, and Stefanu are uh, bright, actually, for Princeton. Lift off, period three. Bright picks this one up. 
centers it, but Menichello picks it off. Wrist shot, fired it just wide. Chase jumps in before Rodriguez could get to it. Trying to get through a few rockets there. Gets it to Mosley, who chips it for Bright, who's going to skate it in. Gets around Redmond. She's going to be pulled down. This has got to be maybe a penalty shot, and it is. So Bright will have the penalty shot as she got around Redmond and took the stick right out of her hands. That's a pretty easy, that's about as easy of a call as you're going to get for a penalty shot. And Bright will come in and take the shot. Right, we'll skate it right down the middle. The left-handed shot comes in on Lacey, goes to the back end, just loses the handle! And Lacey keeps the shutout going. I don't even, she didn't even get it on goal there. And Bright frustrated, but that's hockey, that's just gonna happen sometimes, kid. Don't worry about it, you'll have other chances. It's a cruel game sometimes. So after the penalty shot, the face-off will be in the attacking zone for Princeton. That was their big opportunity to maybe get back into this game, which is 4-0 in favor of the Rockets. Nieves on the dot with Cook and Hansen at the slot. Risco on the face-off sent it right at the net and Lacey is able to cover it up. It didn't have a lot of juice on it, but it bounced just before it hit. And that's, can, that can be very tricky for a goalie. So Nieves wins that face off and sends it back for Fox. It goes to the far side boards for Hansen, but now Princeton aggressively are trying to step it up here offensively and Chase stayed all the way in. Chase is a defenseman, but she's capable of putting pucks in the net as we've seen in games between these two so far. Bright, who was denied on the penalty shot, maybe with some tough luck rather than denied so much. Moved it through neutral ice, battled for it just below us, and it comes out to Bruno. Bright knocked that away. She's been all over the place here. Briscoe sends it forward, but the Rockets are able to grab it. Bruno chips it off the boards in front of the scorer's table. Hansen got to it first. Chase retreats back. Cook puts her under pressure. Skate, skates with it, does Chase into open ice and finds Briscoe. Briscoe loses it there. Cook's going to pick it up. She's got Hansen trailing. She fires it toward the net. Bodner got a piece of it, and it goes to the right side of the net. Hansen picks it off in the slot. Tries to recover it, but she's got a lot of Princeton traffic there and can't get through it. Redmond picks it up, chips it for Matone, who nutmeg Stefanu, but not trying to. It's just a serendipitous nutmeg. Well, I guess that depends on who you're rooting for. Under 15 minutes now to play. 4-0 Rockets. Nieves with two, Cook with one, Rizzo with one. Rizzo wearing 21 today, that's not Peyton Jacobus. And it is reflected as much on the score sheet. Thank you, Anthony Matone. Anthony and Regina taking care of the score board and the score book as that one comes to Fassler, who steers it aside. Centering feed, Ulrich got it there, but one of the Wormsters gets it out. Tries to send it for Fender, but it's a little too hard. No connection. Back into neutralize. Rizzo is going to go in two on two with Ulrich. She'll skate it around the boards on the far side. Markley got a piece of it. Rizzo regains. Still has it over there. Rizzo will try to go to the point. Connolly has to step in to help. Redmond grabs it. Wrist shot through traffic. Redirected by Bodner, who got it all the way away. Oh, Rick. Oh, she was looking for Connolly over there, but had a couple of pairs of legs to get it through and got it through one, but not two. Rockets retreat. Redmond over to Matone. Grace Matone up for Luisa Rizzo, who is trying to send it toward the middle. Nobody on rushing. Donnelly. 
brings it in. Nieves retreats back behind her own net, sends it for Rodriguez. Rizzo jumps off, Manichello jumps on. Donnelly picks this one up. Rodriguez picked that off in the slot, sent it near side where Minichello picked it up. It comes to the left wing line. Minichello battles through Risco and Russell to send it deep. Rodriguez will outrace one of the Wormsers. There's a trip over there that Nieves got away with. No call. So there, there's a couple that are, they've evened out the calls and the non-calls. It's really a non-issue for the way the refs have called it today in one person's opinion. A couple of misses on either side, but basically even. And the Tiger Lilies have had four of the five power plays and they've all been about fair, as well as you could hope for. On a Sunday afternoon, when you could be watching the NFL games, but you're joining us instead. Or maybe you're doing both. And if you are, then we're glad you're doing that. I haven't gotten an update on the Giant game, which maybe means bad news as Rodriguez was trying to spring Ulrich. Eventually Mia gets to it and sends it for Grace. Lauren Fox picks it up, looks forward, sends it for Ulrich who got a piece and it goes in for Ulrich to pick it up. Grace takes it behind the end line, sends it back the other way on the reversal. Menichello picks it out of the corner, looking for somebody in the middle, had Fox. Fox, she's not getting away with that trip, though. And uh, so there have been a few that added up, and Fox is going into the box right there. Rockets faithful, not happy with that one, but at this point, it's really, it's, it's certainly been evened out. That will switch the face off to the offensive zone for Princeton. They will face it off to the right side, the stick side of Emma Lacey. With 11.44 left in the game, and the Rockets holding a 4-0 lead. Lauren Fox in for the trip for two minutes. The Rockets hope that she's in there for all two minutes because if she is, that means they killed off the penalty. Centering feed doesn't connect. I think Debbie Rizzo was trying to send me an update on a football game, but I only saw the time, not the score. Backhand shot, one save, and then a second save by Lacey. That killed off the first 22 seconds of the penalty, which up front is being killed off by Grace Ulrich, 84, and Francesca Hansen, number nine, in the white jerseys. Grace Matone, 89, and Kira Redmond, 71, on defense. Princeton in black wins the faceoff. Chase, left point. Wrist shot, redirected by one of the Wormsters in front, but there's a save. Bright, up to the point for Chase. Tried to send it down low for Bright, for, but it hit Bright, and she didn't want that to happen. Hansen will just sit there and get help from Redmond to keep time ticking off the clock. She has a chance to send Ulrich, but Bodner jumped back, seeing it happening. Okay. Apparently the Giant game is 13-13 in the third quarter, so I feel like that's good news since they were down to the Washington Commanders 10-0 early in the game. But I'm concentrating on hockey right now, folks. So let's see if the Rockets can kill off the rest of this penalty or if the Tiger Lilies can finally get on the board. 35 seconds left to kill in the penalty to Fox. Tiger Lilies send it up, but Bruno jumps through hoops and sends it back in. Ulrich is gonna skate all the way off as the puck comes out. Matone's gonna grab it. She's got Nieves with her serendipitously. As Bruno is basically a forward at this point on this shift, but now she shifts back to defense. Look has one of the goals. Nieves, who was pursuing the puck, has two of the others. Rizzo has the other. 4-0 Rockets, 9.42 left. Full and even strength as Lauren Fox exits the box. Rockets have killed off all five power plays. Sent up for Nieves. She's got Rizzo with her. Nieves leaves it for Rizzo. Rizzo cuts to the middle. 
Rizzo looking, chips it for Connolly. Wrist shot through traffic, redirected. I think Markley got a piece of it to chip it over the net. Fox from the point. Rizzo tries to redirect it down low. Rizzo to Fox. Fox brings it in, tries to get it through traffic. Markley just denied Rizzo a whack at it. Markley waits for her team to get set, sends it up the near side boards and couldn't connect with Fender, so Fox retreats to pick it up. Bruno, Risco stepped it in and picked it off. Nieves, Rizzo to Nieves, back toward the net. Fassler steered it aside easily. Rizzo picks it up near side wing. Leaves it for Nieves, fires it. Fassler save with the left pad. One of the Wormsers picks it up and will skate it right up the middle, or Risco gets right in her way, but they still are able to get it out. Fender clears the center line and dumps it in under traffic from Matone. Redmond picks it up behind the end line with 8.20 left and a 4-0 lead for the white team. The New Jersey Rockets. Centering feed knocked away by Matone. Rizzo kind of waited there and used herself as a pick because she was at the end of her shift. She jumps off. Ulrich now centering Rodriguez and Menichello. 84 is Grace Ulrich, and she will hustle back, trying to beat Donnelly to the puck, and she does. She turns it up, sends it towards Stefano, who was getting ready for a change. It hits Stefano's skate, but she had taken herself out of the play, so that's not going to be too many on the ice. Ulrich with a low wrist shot. It was knocked away by a stick blade of one of the Tiger Lilies and popped over Fassler and her net. Russell's gonna pick this one up. Rush in on Redmond, tries to cross through the middle, but Redmond gets a piece of the puck. Redmond uses the body to shield her off, sends it up the near side wing for Hope Menichello, and Hope sends it for Mia Rodriguez. Rodriguez knocks it down with the skate. There's not a more adept person on the ice with her feet than 36 Rodriguez who is quite potent on the pitch when it comes to soccer. Donnelly gets it stolen by Menichello. Menichello's one-on-one -on -one with Chase. Menichello comes down the middle, gets by Chase, in on Fassler, backhand score, deposited in with the backhand by number 48, Hope Menichello, like she was going to the bank on a Tuesday to put that one into her account. Five nothing Rockets, 641 left. Period three. Well, Hope Manichello wears number 48 because her favorite player in the world is Jacob deGrom. And deGrom now a former New York Met. As Wormster comes in, wrist shot, Lacey saves and she covers it up. DeGrom, a free agent, signed a five-year, $185 million deal with the Texas Rangers this week. And uh, Hope was upset as any Mets fan would be. You have a generational type pitcher and somebody you root for and somebody whose number you want to wear. And uh, he makes a business decision to move on. So she's conflicted as to if she's still going to root for the man or the Rangers or the Mets, but that'll warm your heart a little bit today. Getting a goal always makes you feel a little bit better. Maybe you can wear number 48 now in honor of the great Anthony Rizzo. That's what, I, that's what I'll say. I'll posit that one for you to the Minikillo crew. Hansen brings it in on the left wing. Gets to the top of the circle and fires a wrist shot over the net. Ulrich chases it down. Centering feed can't connect. Ping pong back in and out eventually Mosley is the one to get it out. Sent on the near side point, but couldn't connect with Ulrich. Chipped up the boards, Hansen powers it through. 
still with it. And one of the Wormsters is back there. Bodner's back there. Ulrich's back there. Hansen's back there. Rizzo's out with that crew now. So Rizzo and Hansen together as a wing pair. We haven't seen that combo yet today. Hansen leaves it for Rizzo. She has no room. She sends it into the corner. Centers it. Oh, I don't know if she was looking for Hansen, but Francesca skated off to change. Connolly jumped on for she, and she was back at safety in that play. Centered down the middle. Bright's there. Bright tries to fire it at the net. And Lacey makes the save on the pop-up. Lacey gets the hug from Connolly with 4.34 left in the game. Rockets comfortably ahead by 5-0. The shots now are 29-17 for the Rockets. So if you're just tuning in, the Rockets had 20 of the first 21 shots of the game. Since then, it's 16-9 uh, for Princeton. So the scoreboard has not necessarily indicated the difference in actual play on the ice. Fox jumps in off the change and keeps it in at the point. Connolly's gonna try to send it along the dasher to see if she can find Matone up there. Matone jumped in to do it. Rizzo centered for Nieves, but too strong, and Bright is gonna get that, send it down. I don't think it's gonna be an icing because the puck is gonna die. It was fluttering a bit, and. Now there's enough snow on the ice to slow it down just enough. Off of Fender's foot, Fox gets it in, and Fox will continue to chase it. Rizzo jumps off, and that puck goes at the net. And Fassler covers it up. Three twenty-eight left, period three. Rockets complete their change as Ulrich takes the face off with Cook in the slot and the late arriving Connolly. Fender has it. She doesn't know where it is. She, she took it right in the gut. Maybe she took it in the hand and was just, she's definitely feeling the effect of blocking that shot, Rose Fender, 55 and black. Shot through traffic, doesn't get all the way through. One of the Wormsters, the lefty, is going to pick it up and skate it over the line on the left side into the offensive zone. Bruno disrupted it, but Fender still pushes it forward. Fender and Fox battle there, kept in by Markley between the points, and now it comes back out, and Brooke Markley waits for her team to get onside. We'll skate it in. She gets to the dot. Rashad Lacey with the big glove save to keep the clean sheet alive with... 2.44 left in the game. So, barring a three-mile island like Meltdown, and the elder of the viewers and listeners will understand that reference, the Rockets are going to deposit this one into the win column. So the win, win lost, one lost part of that, that game on a Sunday afternoon is essentially decided at this point. It's just a matter of the final tally and the sportsmanship that we want to see both teams conduct themselves with through the final whistle. If you're a coach in this situation, you still expect your team to play hard to the final whistle and be sporting in the manner that you do. Nieves centering feed. Rizzo got the backhand on it but couldn't redirect it into the net. Redmond sends it from high down to low. A little too strong for Rizzo to get there. Bodner steered it off the boards up, and Fender's trying to get it out, but couldn't. Chipped up now and out by Markley. Redmond retreats with her players changing one or two on the boards on the far side at the bench with 100 seconds left. Rockets getting ready to officially put this one in the win column. Hansen now up for one of the Wormsers. She's going to skate it in. Ulrich pounded it out of the zone. Markley picks it up. 
Banks it off the boards for Donnelly. Still skating hard. Everybody's still playing hard here, even though the decision is a fate accompli. Russell picks it up. Markley keeps it in at the point, but didn't have an angle at net, so she sends it into the far side. Last minute of play in the third period. This is the last minute. Rodriguez out hustled, not out hustled, just out raced by Chase. Menichello stepped in to knock that one away, and Rodriguez will pick it up. She's two on five. Rodriguez will circle the back of the net with 41 seconds in the game, and the Rockets holding a 5 0 lead. Disrupted over there, kept in though by Menichello. She sends it down low for Hansen. Hansen tried to fire it at the net, but it went wide. Rodriguez picks it up at the half boards on the far side and sends it around low. Hansen chips and turns it back around with 20 seconds left. Menichello steers it around the boards. It's reversed to the near side corner. Markley sends it up and out. That might be the final sequence because Lacey's going to have to come and clear it, and she does. And that is going to do it the last five seconds. Minichello maybe has one last shot here. Knocked away by Chase. That will do it. The Rockets get the shutout from Emma Lacey, and she gets the big hugs over there. We'll see if they add any shots to the final total, which now stands at 30 to 18. So 18 on goal, 18 saves for number seven, Emma Lacey. And Lucy Fassler saw 30, and she stopped 25. But the story really was the Rockets scored twice in the first minute and a half. Nieves and then Rizzo wearing 21 right there. You see her fourth in line for uh, P.J. Jacobus, who's still sidelined. But at least it was nice to see a 21 out there and to see a 21 put one in the net. And we hope to see the real thing back very, very soon. In the meantime, the Rockets will take it. The story really was how the Rockets just opened it up in the first period. They built that 2 0 lead within the first 90 seconds or so. And then they made it 3 0 by way of Izzy Cook tapping one in midway through the third. And the shots at one point were 20 to 1 for the Rockets. So the final tally of 30 to 18 means Princeton had a 17 10 advantage thereafter. Tiger Lilies did have five power plays they obviously couldn't convert because they ended up with no goals. And so that's a testament to the Rockets' penalty killing and their team defense and, of course, goaltending. But it was a little bit closer than the 5 nothing score indicated for sure. If you like what you see, then hit the subscribe button and the alerts button. And every time we go live or upload you new content like a coach interview or a better, higher quality copy of the game, you will know about it. And we appreciate your support. This thing started out in the pandemic as, hey, somebody is allowed to go in there and record the games or stream the games. And the reaction from parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, fans, the players themselves, coaches. It's been overwhelmingly positive, and I appreciate all of the good words that I've been fortunate enough to receive here over the past couple of years from all of you, whether it's in the comments or, amazingly, a lot of you have uh, approached me in person to... Uh, shake hands and I very, very, very much appreciate that and I'm grateful for all of that support. I'm glad to do it for uh, just for those moments. That is going to do it from Rock Ice in Donella, New Jersey. The final score, Rockets 5, Princeton Tiger Lilies nothing. This is Joe Rizzo. Thanks for watching New Jersey Rockets Girls Hockey.